No 
terrible place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain. That I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain. That I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. Mercy 
calls me to be like you. Thank you, God. And your favor is my delight. And every day I'll awaken my praise and pour out a song from my heart. You
Because we're sitting down, I need you to change the way you think. We're still having church. Man, we're still having church. God is still moving mightily. So don't think because we're sitting down it should be a casual thing. I think I may have made a mistake sometimes when we go downstairs. Uh, when we get there, everybody starts thinking, well, do I want coffee or do I want soda? Do I want a snack or do I want... And what can I get? Should we order pizza? No. No, you shouldn't. And you should pay for the soda. In a way, some of y'all waste water. We're going to charge twice what we charge for soda for water. And we will be a rich church. <laughs> Praise God. Ephesians chapter 4. You know Ephesians 4 very well. Um, it is very, very important. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith, wherewith you are called. Imagine that. Paul, mighty man of God, is saying, hey, I'm telling you, I'm asking you as kindly as I know how, with boldness, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Mm -hmm. Paul's not saying, hey, I hope you're the best tent maker there was. Right, no, sir. He's not saying, I hope you're a great doctor or a great lawyer, great physician. 
Uh, he's not saying, I, I hope that, you know, you're the greatest electrician, the plumber, the mathematician, the governor. He's saying, I want you to be the greatest where it counts. Mm -hmm. And that is the work of the Lord. Amen. Lord, amen. But it, notice what he says. He says, that you walk worthy. That you walk worthy. Everybody say worthy. worthy. What does that mean to you? Unfortunately, to some it means prepared. A donkey's prepared to carry his master. Mm -hmm. So does that make you a donkey? No, sir. So it's not prepared. No. Prepared's in it, but that's not what it's talking about. Amen. He's saying, you need to walk worthy. And then I hear the pity patterns of foolishness, where people say, We're, I'm just so not worthy. Okay, I need you to help me with something. You're not worthy. That's right. None of us are. Amen. So the worth that we're talking about is not you making it up as best you can so you can do something for Jesus. You can't repay that debt. You gave him yourself. You gave him all, right? Well, here's the problem. He paid for it. He didn't give nothing. He paid for it. So he's been waiting on you to do what you're supposed to be doing because in a sense, his blood bought your freedom. Amen. Amen. Right. Now that you have freedom, what are you going to do with it? Well, when church is over and I'm done crying and I'm done doing the altar call and I'm done feeling sorry for the stuff that I've been doing lately that I know I have no business and no right doing because it crucifies Christ again. But nobody was looking and nobody saw me. And uh, and so we, I should be okay. Huh, really? No way. It's called a hypocrite. And since nobody's seen and I've cried and everybody feels like I'm triumphing and I'm overcoming and I'm doing better and everything's going great. Since they feel that way, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go right back to where I was before I got here this morning. No, sir. But see, that's what's been happening. What changed in your household? From this morning's service to right now. Well, nothing. It wasn't really for me. It was for the visitor. Really? It was for the one that's young and youthful and keeps being tempted. And we know God's trying to deal with them. And Oh, I'm just praying hard that God will let them help them get over that rain. And then get over that hill and see the rainbow again. Um, well, I was trying to get things out of the service, but you know, um, I've got I've got children and they're distracting. I've got a husband and he's distracting. I got a wife and she's distracting. My dog ate my homework. It's distracting. Well, I was trying, Pastor, but there's this wife and this husband, and they're always distracting. And so I didn't get everything out of the service because they're distracting. <laughs> well, amen, walls. <laughs> and we're blaming everybody because we didn't get what we thought we should get out of this morning's service. Or we thought it was for somebody else. So nothing's changed in our household. Nothing's changed in our prayer life. Nothing has changed in our walk with Christ. Wow. Nothing. Felt good, cried a little bit, worshiped some, that was great. And we went right back to the grindstone. What changed in you today? Wow. What made you get closer to heaven mm. and further away from sin? What made you get closer to Christ? What made you get 
worthy of your calling, of your vocation. What, what's, what's happened in your life today that changed it? Well, I had a good worship service. You had one last Sunday, too. Oh, yeah. And you kept on the same things. Good. Well, I was waiting for the anointing to come and overpower me. That's funny because the anointing was waiting on you to be able to come in and overpower me. You know, there's a switch up there. Flip at the air slowly. We're, this church is as old as Natalie. <laughs> there we go. Just walk away. If it gets too cold, blame Sister Shore. I'm going to fix it. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so what's changed? Why did you come to church today? Because that's what we do. I'm a Christian. If that's the only reason you came to church today, you came to church for the wrong reason. When was the last time you did a Bible study? I'm not talking about the one I told you to do. I'm talking about you went and found somebody and you did a Bible study. Ministers, if you ever want to get in this pulpit again, you're going to report to me that you're doing Bible studies and I want to know who and I want to go in. Yes, sir. Well, amen anyway, Brother Cameron. Woo! Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. You find somebody to do a Bible study. Well, I don't know how. Fine. And I will achieve mine because I will give you a Bible study. <laughs> I heard my feelings, huh? We've already been talking to Nathan and Noah. We're going to be giving this to Don't go. You want to have a Bible study? Uh uh, they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> Had your chance? You muffed it. Okay? So that's already in play. Find somebody to give a Bible study to. Yes, sir. How are we ever going to reach souls if we're not doing anything Come to reach souls? Again. And then people say, and, and I heard it, I heard straight, uh, well, yeah, I want a Bible study, but I don't want any of this man stuff. I want it all Bible. Good. I got you right where I want you. And then you're praying and you're fasting for God to move during those Bible studies. See, it adds to your prayer time and it adds to your fasting. And you begin to get excited about the things of God. And yes, the enemy's going to come in. And he's going to try and interrupt. And he's going to try and say, well, not today and not tomorrow. And you're going to say, no, 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 no. You promised me a Bible study. We need to do it. Yes, sir. And that's what we need to do. Amen. Amen. So if you're going to minister in this church, you need to do Bible studies. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. We're never going to add Jesus. and grow this church if, we don't, if we're not doing Bible studies. With God. Yes, sir. That's true. When people learn the word of God, they want to be in the house of God. A part of the things of God, and they want to fall in love with God. Amen. And they can't yes. do it because we're so busy. I've got this to do, and I got this, and I haven't even done washing yet. And I've got that to do, and I do, and I've got yard work now. And I've got this to do, and I've got that to do, and I've still got to get a haircut. It took me over five weeks to get a haircut. Standing next to Sister Schiller, people call me Patricia because my hair is too long. At least that's how I felt. Right? right? So every ministry, every person in this church that has the calling of God, you need to start doing Bible studies. Amen. We, we have search for truth. Yes, sir, we do. It walks us straight through it. There are rules to search of truth. Well, the first rule for search of truth is you leave all your beliefs at the door. Yes. Don't bring them with you. Whatever you were taught anywhere else, leave them at the door. Secondly, we're not ever going to argue about Scripture. Amen. 
Never going to do it. It's not going to happen. Amen. I'm not arguing. I'm not here to shove it down your throat. I'm here to say the Bible says this. Ta-da! And thirdly, we're going to leave all your opinions and my opinions at the door. Amen. That's right. Good. And, and I've added that, that one, but the fourth one is this. The Word of God is going to be the only thing we use. Amen. We're not going to bring a book in. That's right. We're not going to bring so-and-so theologian, famous TV evangelist, so-and-so sister, whatever, whatever. No, we're only going to use the Word of God as our teaching manual. Okay? Yeah. That's how you teach. And then when someone says, well, I don't know, I agree with this. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Remember, that's not my opinion. We're just reading this from the Word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Good. That's the way we teach Bible studies. We use the Word of God the way the Word of God tells us. Mm -hmm. And that is straightforward and faithful in love. Yes. Amen. And you don't want to be teaching and say, well, you need to do it, because look, you just teach it. You don't have to tell them to do anything. Yep. The Holy Ghost will. Amen. Praise be to God. That's the Holy Ghost. That's why Brother Ross has all that coat to air right now. He looks like Grizzly Adams. Praise be to God. If you don't know who Grizzly Adams is, uh, he looks like Uncle Cy, okay? Grizzly Adams. Yeah, yeah. I was going from Ben Laden. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> you need to walk worthy of your vocation wherewith you're called. Yeah. How worthy have you been walking? Oh, come on. Yeah. Let's Honestly, it's great for people to see God on you. Well, they ought to. That is not walking worthy. That's the least you can do. Mm -hmm. When they hear me listen to Christian music, I know heathens that listen to Christian music. Mm -hmm. I'm at work, and the guy's telling me I need to convert my boss to Christianity. He's the head of the, the commercial division. Mm -hmm. And then as he's over there cussing and telling dirty jokes, Somehow, he thinks he doesn't know what walking worthy of anything means. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, sir. We're missing the mark. Yes. Help us, God. There is a mark we're supposed to hit. Pressing toward the mark of the Most High God. Yes. Good. That's scripture. Mm -hmm. we're, we're supposed to press toward the mark of the Most High God. And we're not. Here's the part. You ready for this? I'm one good preacher. I mean, you're blessed. <laughs> what for me, you probably look like a hairy ape right now. <laughs> You'd still be stuck in that, I don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know if God even talks to me. Brother Stephen would be stuck into the pacing back and forth. saying, uh, a lot. Pastor, you're kind of being rude. Exactly. For my purpose. Because the next verse says, with lowliness and meekness right. and long suffering, forbearing one another in love. What does the word forbearing mean? Anybody else? To hold up. To hold up? Anybody else? Is it, I'm my brother's keeper? Being my brother's keeper? These are all good. Let's ask that quiet, noble one, Google. <laughs> Biblical definition 
for forbearing. Forbearing means a person patient and restrained. Do you want to hear the remaining one? No. Can't say a lot. Can say it at all. It's an adjective. It means of a person which is patient and restrained. Patient and restrained. So we can read it with all lowliness, meekness, patient and restrained. I'm sorry, long suffering, for bearing or patience and restraining one another in love. Patient and restraining one another in love. Isn't that something? I'm supposed to be patient with you and restrain you at the same time in godly love. I'm supposed to be patient with you to get on my nerves and restraining to you in love. You know what that means? Slow down. Because your zeal will get you in trouble. You see, you're in battle. On day one, you're excited because you're part of the army. You're part of God's army now. I've come to kick the devil's butt. <laughs> I've come to show the devil how to eat crow. How to choke on a chopstick. And you grab your weapon and you run to the front line and you start swinging your sword and the devil goes, ha! Go ahead and throw, quote a couple scriptures to me. No weapon, to, uh, no weapon, uh, that one, you know. And the devil finishes. Forming against me shall prosper. Then you realize your enemy can quote as many scriptures as you can. From Genesis 1 and 1 to Revelations, amen. For those of you who don't know, Genesis starts with Genesis 1 and 1. And Revelations ends with the word amen. So the devil's on a heyday fighting you. You want to go up and cut him up and slice him up. And even the generals are like, no, 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 no. Too late. Done right out in the middle of the battle. It took a pocket knife to fight a tank. It took a switchblade to fight a nuclear bomb. Something's wrong here. He thinks somebody did not win. <laughs> Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Notice the key words, unity of the spirit yes. and bond of yes. what? Peace. peace. Are you knowing these things? Have you thought of these things? Yes, sir. Has this been your goal? There's one body, one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. Did you hear that? You get one chance at your calling. Mm -hmm. There's one hope for it. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, praise God. One God, Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Yes. Yes. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Yes. Wherefore, he said, even he ascended upon high, he left captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Amen. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? You know what it's saying? Christ went to hell for you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. So let me ask the question again. What have you achieved by coming to church today?
Christ descended into hell first for you. What's changing about you after today? What's your new goal for Christ? What's your new burden to serve the Lord, to work for his kingdom, to be about his business? What's your goal to make your vocation sure? Are you following me? Amen? Amen. Some people is like, mm -hmm. I am, I just don't know where you're going. Share the GPS with you. He said, wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captain and gave gifts unto the man now that he ascended. What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Amen. Then it goes on, then he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. Let me help you out with how important this is to God. You ready? Yes, sir. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are so important to God, it did not originate in heaven. It was so important to God, that it originated above heaven. Think about it. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles. And some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. The fivefold ministry is so important to God that he actually created it above heaven. Not in heaven. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That scripture tells me that one day every living being will come into the knowledge of who Jesus Christ really is. And that is God in the flesh. God on. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, right. by the sight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Wow. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Amen. You want to grow up? Here's the way you need to do it. You need to grow up in Christ. Amen. You want to mature, mature in Christ. Let's talk about growing up for a while, shall we? You know how I know people aren't ready for the things spiritually? Because of the physically, they do stupid stuff. Right? Somebody says, can you help me with this? Yeah. And then you literally got to go hold their hand and do it for them show them how to do it. They, they take no they, they take no what's the word I'm looking for? Ownership. Effort. Huh? Ownership. Ownership. Effort in themselves. It's like, okay, I'll do it. Now you take my hand and, and walk me all the way through it every time I do it. Right. So are you mature or are you immature? Immature. Because somebody who's immature needs somebody to hold their hand and walk them through it right. and teach them, oh, you should do it this way, not this way. You know what the first rule of doing anything new is? Step back, take a breath, and think about it for a moment. Yes. Notice what the world says. Don't think about it. Just do it. Mm. <laughs> and God says, don't just do it. Ask me about it. Yes, yes, yes. 
So we do it God's way, then God's going to be able to show us what to do, when to do, why to do, and how to do. And here's the deal. It should be something as simple as keeping God's house clean. Yes, right. If you come into God's house and it's filthy, and you're walking around and you're going, why hasn't somebody done this? Most of the time, it's because you haven't done it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Why hasn't somebody mowed the grass? need to borrow a shirt that says lawn anything on it, I'll find one for you. I'll write it on a little posting here. I've got some. Just tell me when you're starving. I've got big ones so it looks like a real tag. Lawn. Person. Lawn dude. You prefer purple? Do <laughs> that one's coming. <laughs> now I know it's doing a long one. No. <laughs> I got t shirts <laughs> So we've got all this available to us. You can turn that off so it doesn't freeze us now. Sister Schiller thinks she's going to turn it up off soon. So whatever you need the tag for, I've got quite a few of these and we can order more. But then you have to do it. You have to think about it. You have to do it right. Yes, sir. You have to do it as unto the Lord. Come on, amen. That's word. The Lord's going to come and he's going to inspect it. Why? Because you're doing it unto him. Amen. Oh, that doesn't do that. Yeah, it does. He walks with you all the time. Why wouldn't he yes. inspect what you do? And he's already inspecting your heart to see why you're doing it. Oh, come on. Yes. Oh, God. He's already inspecting your mind to see where your thought is when you do it. I can't believe I got to do it. Nobody else is doing it. I'm sick and tired of these lazy people. Nobody else is doing anything. I'm the one that does everything. Well, that's the problem. You're the one that does everything, so why should anybody else? Oh, come on. Good. And then there's everybody else that says, boy, they should, they should. Let somebody else do that. Well, hello, somebody else. <laughs> How are you today? Do you need a stick or two? <laughs> right? Yes, that's right. Amen. Either we're taking responsibility for the things of God, or we're playing with God in the first place. We read it. Mm -hmm. We read it. Whether they're in this for the things of God or we're in this for selfish reasons. Here's the key. The scripture says, God is not mocked. Mocking God can come in any term where you start to believe you are better than somebody else or your ministry is too up there to go and do those things. The moment you think you're up there, you are so far down there, it's not funny. Yeah. 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 Amen. Let me tell you something. You can get go and preach conferences. And, and I was preaching a uh, thing in, in New York, and it was hard. I was fighting some spiritual battles all the way there. That's my family. And one of the things was, why me? I, my name's just Troy Daniel from Charlestown, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And the phone rings. It was a man of God. He said, hey, the Lord told me to call you and tell you he chose you. You are the man of the hour Amen. that he chose for this. Yes, Don't doubt yes. yourself. And I'm like, mm -hmm. huh? Who told you? <laughs> 
God tells. Amen. Thank you. That's why it literally said that we're supposed to do it with lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, mm -hmm. endeavoring to keep the unity in the spirit and the bond of peace. It's not about who's better and who's got more talent. And blah, blah. No, 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 no. That, it really has nothing to do with that. You see, as a pastor and even as an apostle, I'm not here because I'm better than anybody. I'm here because God has seasoned me. Thank you, Lord. And allowed me to teach. The problem is, people don't like the way I teach. Thank you. you hurt my feelings. <laughs> you're, you're too abrupt. You're, you're too forthcoming. You're too... You, 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 use, you use hard words sometimes. Sometimes we need them. Well, sometimes you can get your tissue and go cry in the corner. Right. I should have wore it. Or sometimes you get your bucket and get over it. Yes. My responsibility is to help mature you in the kingdom of God. Yes. My responsibility is to help mature you in the kingdom of God. How are you going to be mature if you're being immature in your thoughts? Amen. If you're being a Brad, baby, selfish. Mm -hmm. yes. And here's the thing, we all go, not me. <laughs> you don't understand me. You don't know why. God does. Yes, I don't know why he came at me like that. I didn't come at you like that. God came at you like that. Right. I'm not God, but he told me what you were doing and, and what I'm supposed to say to you, and I said you think I'm getting in trouble with him not saying what he tells me to say? You're out of your mind. Amen. Because I've been whipped by God. And I mean whipped. You know, huh? No. You get whipped by God. I'll stand back and say, I told you. That's part of that wisdom. I told you. Do we all come in the unity of the faith? And of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I'm trying to get you to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Some of you are in here. You don't even know who you are. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. My name is Cameron Rock. <laughs> he knows I'm just you. That's not what I'm talking about. You have no idea who you are in Jesus. But here's the reason you don't. It's a choice. You're too busy listening to the devil whispering until your past say this, until your temptations say that, and your frustrations say this. And because life's not perfect, you think you just must be outside of the will of God. Quickly. Tell me about Jesus' life and show me where the perfect was. Go ahead. Look at Jesus' life real quick and all that he went through and then everything that happened whenever they found out who he was. And tell me where the perfect started. They were trying to kill him when they found out he was going to be born. Is that the perfect part you wanted? But you think yours should be perfect. Well, I'm not Jesus. Thank God we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> so, quit trying to act like you, God owes you some perfect life. Some perfect something. He doesn't. He's trying to get you toward Him. He's trying to get you to salvation. He's yes. trying to get you to godly fear and, right. and, and godly love and godly uh, vocation and God, everything. Yes, Amen. He's trying to get your understanding right. that everything needs to measure up to Christ, nothing else. Right. Everything you say, everything you do, everywhere you go, everything you will ever be. Mm -hmm. You need to get to where Jesus is. So, 
How you measure it up? Nobody? That we henceforth be no more children. You know you can tell a child something, they'll believe you. Then they'll walk over there and tell another child, somebody else to tell the child something, they'll believe them. And then they don't know what to believe. No, 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 Brussels sprouts really are candy, eat it. <laughs> That's not candy. Hominy is candy. <laughs> Liver's the best tasting thing in the world. Onions are good for everybody. Yeah. Except for the ones they kill. <laughs> <laughs> that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro. Yeah, all right. uh -huh. That's good. Now stop for a minute and look at your life. How busy are you? How busy are you? Oh, I know what he's trying to do. Yeah, I'm trying to teach you the Word of God. I'm trying to get you to do what the Word of God says. This is not a me against you. I'm reading the Word of God. The only one you'll be against is God. God said he doesn't want you to be a little child anymore. He's not saying he doesn't want you to have a childlike heart. He's saying, quit being childish. Quit being tossed to, to and fro of every word of somebody else's new doctrine. Somebody else's new idea. Some new group. Some new, new organization. Some new play. Some new... The latest fact. You know why I'm wearing the latest fad today? I don't know why. I like my other shoes. What are these called? Hey, dude. Hey, dude. You know what that means? That means nothing. That means when people say, hey, dude, I have to respond now. <laughs> And before when they said, hey, dude, I could ignore them. But I can't anymore. Because it's written on the back of my shoe. They think it's my name. We get caught up in the new wave of today. The new word of the day. The, the, the newest preacher. The newest this. The newest singer. The newest that. When we have hold tight to God and the truth and the, the gifts are flowing and the fruits are flowing and all the blessings of God are flowing, we don't need to run to the nearest fad. Why? Because we already have the right thing. We already have the truth of the gospel, the right doctrine, the real truth. It says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the slide of men. You know what the slide is, right? Go up shaking the hand. He walks down the road. Oh, I can't believe you shook my hand. He's so happy to see me. And I'm dangling his watch in my other hand. <laughs> slide of hand. Slide of tongue. Send you to hell and then some. With every Carried about with every wind of doctrine. In other words, you're flown all over the place. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness. There's a group out there right now, and I'm not going to name any other thing, but just say it's a group. There's a, a group out there right now, and that group declares that they are the real Israelites. They're actually the real idiots. There's, there's nothing Israelite about them. 
was first stirred in the United States. They can't pinpoint anything to the Jewish heritage. And the Bible says, you better be careful because if you begin to declare that you're part of the Jews and you're not, you're cursed. Yes, sir. It does say that. You can have Jewish heritage in your life, that's fine. It doesn't make you a Jew. Right. Amen. So people get up with cunning crap and it's well it's tied to the Bible and the Bible says it. they'll pick and choose and take four or five different scriptures and ram it all together. Create their own new religion. You know, like the raise your hand thing. I'm going to go to heaven. Poof, you're going to heaven. You raise your hand. The rest of y'all did. Sorry. <laughs> Had your chance muffed it. <laughs> the say it after me. Saints. Saints. Yep. Say it after me, saints. Ready? Say this prayer after me. Dear Father, I'm a sinner. I'm a big guppy. I have been in the life of water, and I've been fished out. It's the only two of them said it. They're going to have the rest. Y'all missed it. <laughs> Had your chance, loved it. Yes, that is on uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> Cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him and all things, which is the head, even Christ. So when you came into the church this morning, was it just to get a high on worship? No. Was it just to get a high on grace? No. Was it just to see who would come and visit? Was it just to see who would shout, who would run the aisles? Was it just to see, oh God, are we going the right way? Because if we're going the right way, somebody, people are going to worship more, people are going to shout more, people are going to... That's all true. If people aren't doing that, that then then they are kind of dead spiritually. We ought to come in here. But we ought not to come here waiting for somebody else to do something. We ought to come in here and do it ourselves. Amen. Verse 16 says, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. Yes. You know what's saying? Every part of the body has to give love. Yes. And it will be known by the love that it gives. If you're the arm and you go around hitting everybody, everybody's going to know you're probably not a loving part. your finger and you go around poking everybody in the eye, I'm pretty sure you're not a loving part. If you're the foot and you go around kicking everyone, you're probably not a loving part. If you're the eyeball but you go around getting everybody the stink eye, you're probably not a loving part. If you're the mouth and all you can do is gossip, But, hon, you know I'm just doing it to tell you about it. I'm a really gossip. Whatever you need to do to get your gossip out, okay. You know I'm not putting down. I'm just telling you. Well. How about you bite your tongue and close your lips? Yes. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. Good, amen. In the vanity of their mind. Yes. You guys are so good. Blessed I'm your pastor. Yes, you are. So blessed that I do this and that one does that. 
aren't the best church in the world, and all the other ones are going to hell. They're all flawed. Good thing we don't have any. Or if you showed up and you're always looking at our flaws, it's because you're more flawed than we are. Well, Pastor, you're always looking at us. I'm your pastor. I'm supposed to help you get to heaven. Amen. Amen. I'm supposed to tell you when you're going the wrong path. Yes, sir. See, that's about that's the difference between a child and being childish and being an adult and having a childlike heart. Because when you're a child being childish, you try to judge everybody on the same level. And are you ready for this? And you're not going to like it. Not everybody's on the same level. But you got to grow up. You got to realize that there are reasons for things. I'm not just—I'm not saying you justify evil. That's never okay. I'm saying you got to allow people to look into your life and say, "Hey, you're making a mistake. You need to fix this. You need to correct this. You need to redirect. You need to repent. You need to go and do the right thing." Because as a pastor, that's what I'm required to do. Is to tell you to stop screwing up. And it gets to the point to where sometimes you have to look at somebody and say, you know I love you, right? Knock it off! Right. Amen. That's true. Amen. Did you hear him talk? Says that the door's back there. Well, if you're going to get that offended that you're going to leave, then the door's back there. Yeah. And guess what? You're going to be offended to the next guy, too. Yeah. And the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. And then you're either going to die full of pride, or if one day God's going to be able to kick you between the teeth and knock you down so that you can repent, you and your busted lip. Yeah. I pray to God, God can knock me down and bust my lip rather than me from in hell. Amen. For sure. And no, I, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. That's obvious. <laughs> but I'm not looking to serve everybody. I'm just looking to serve the one God told me to serve. Right. Exactly. Okay, I'm not looking to build a name or a kingdom no. or a title. I'm looking to build God's kingdom. Yes, amen. God's kingdom. God's title. Yes. That's it. That's it. Yes, I don't sir. need anything else. We don't need anything else. Okay. So what did you what did you get from today? Where are you going? Where why did you show up this morning? Mm -hmm. Why'd you show up tonight? Well, I'm kinda tired, I'm kinda sleepy, and I ate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna do you the way you do me when you start talking stuff and I'm tired. And you start just vomiting in the mouth, reasons why you're not serving God the right way. I'm going to do you like you did me. Go ahead. No, I'm listening. Maybe I'll do it the way you guys do. You ready? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> praise God. It's not the right minute, moment to say praise God. <laughs> I'm used to him shouting. <laughs> there, better. <laughs> Sometimes the greatest messages are just spoken with a calm peace. You showed up this morning. Why? And how did you? How are you going home tonight? To see Nathan and Noe crying their eyes out of here. Yes. And to hear him say those words, mm -hmm. I was not 
coming to church today. Right. Yeah. But when I got your text, I said, let's get dressed, we gotta go to church. You don't know what my responsibility as a pastor is to text the people everybody else says I'm never going to text again. Mm -hmm. That even whenever I don't feel well still to get on a phone or an app or something and connect with somebody right. and say just want to let you know I love you. Amen. There's a guy that came once, God moved on like you wouldn't believe. I haven't seen him since. Yeah. I still send him the scripture every day. And every once in a while he'll reach out to me. I'm here, I've got to do this. Then I'm coming back, I want to be in church. I haven't seen him yet. I haven't given up on him either. Nope. No. Amen. 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 We can't give up on anybody. Never have the right to give up on anybody. That's right. There are those that came to be thorns in the flesh and constantly trouble after trouble after trouble after trouble. And there comes a point when God says, I've had enough. I've given them every opportunity. Right. I'm done. Right. But that has to be God's decision. Yes. Yes. Amen. You still have to love them like a child. And then when it's all said and done, you still hurt like a child. It's hard. Let me tell you something. Being in ministry is hard. Yeah. It's difficult. Brother Stephen has experienced a little bit, and I mean a little bit of that. There's stuff that I'm glad he has not had to experience. How devastating was that to you? I mean, it rocked your whole world, right? I imagine 20 times that. Because there are things, there are phone calls you get from people that say, that God's like, I want to bless them, I love them, I, I, I've got great things in store for them. And then you watch them throw them away. And then you hear God say, and now I have to wash my hands. Mm -hmm. And you want to call me. Don't you know what God's trying to do? Yeah. Knock it off. <laughs> you do? Yes. Yeah. There's saints I want to do that too. supposed to be a saint. What are you doing? Right. You're supposed to have already went through this. We've talked about this nine million times. Why aren't you doing this? Why are you doing that? Here's, here's a key thing. Do you know before you do something at work, you think about it? Quick, anybody that doesn't think about it, something you do at work, before you do it, meet your hand. None of you? Then how can you do it in the kingdom of God? How come you do it in the kingdom of God? What does God's house mean? What does a house that belongs to God mean? What should God be able to expect out of me to take care of that house? Wow. Right. To take care of his people. Right. To take care of the community. Mm -hmm. To reach the lost soul. You know, pastors asking a really big thing, us doing Bible study. Really? Is it really that big? Is it really that difficult? Anything you make difficult, by the way, is difficult. Imagine how many souls we can reach right. with truth. Just the Bible studies. 
some of the greatest soul winners I've ever met were the ones doing Bible studies. There are pastors out there, listen to me carefully, that it didn't matter what part of the ministry you were in, you had to do at least five Bible studies a week. Not with the same people, five different Bible studies. And if you didn't, you were not used in the ministry. We live in bigger cities and all that, and I get it. But what if I had set the bar that high? Brother Ross, you need to do five Bible studies a week with five different people. And I need a list of names and addresses. I know where you're at, what you're teaching on, how it went. Are they getting baptized? Have they already repented or not? Have they gotten the Holy Ghost? Do you know Bible studies help you do? Make disciples. Right. The Bible commands us to make disciples. Right. Not me. It did not command me to make disciples. It commanded you to make disciples. Right. Did you know a pastor's job is not to bring in lost souls? It's true. It's preaching, teaching. A pastor's job is to help people move forward and maintain in Christ. Yeah. It's the saints' job to bring in the souls so that they can grow and maintain in Christ. Amen. How you doing? How's it working for you? Listen, this has been different. It's supposed to have been different. It's a different church. It will always be a different church. What God called us to be. I don't want us to fail. But some of us have been coming with the, with the process of I'm coming just to get fueled up and go out again. So I can somehow scarcely make it. Hogwash. Do you know what a hogwash is good for? Nothing. They're going to go right back out. And get in the same mud and muck and feces and roll around in. They're going to eat the same slop. So hogwash is literally an insult. In other words, that was pointless. Whether it's a statement, whether it's an action, whether it's a reaction, it was pointless, hogwash. So who, who are you going to reach? And, and, and when are you going to stay saved so that when you come in and we have the prayer time, you don't have to come up and repent every time, but you can, you can come up and love the Lord for a few moments and get up and minister to others. Or when's he going to get to the point where you're prayed up and stayed up and in love with Jesus so much, you don't have to go to this altar, but you're prepared to minister to the ones that do need. When? When's it going to happen? Well, I can't go touch and pray for him because the Bible pastors taught on the transference of the Spirit, and I have been sinning lately. So I'm not going to go pray for them. I want to. God's longing for me to. The Spirit of God's compelling me to, but I'm not going to because I am just a sinner, just like them. How about you do God and you a favor? Stop being a sinner. Right. Ta-da. Repent, get through it. Here's the thing is, stop repenting and going back there. Repent and go back there. Repent and go back there. Because yes. here's the truth of the matter. You never repented. Right. You repent and return, repent, return, repent, return. You never repented. Right. You talked. Mm -hmm. Repentance is to turn away from, not go near, no longer be a part of, no longer allowed to be applied to you. And if all you're doing is is... Asking for forgiveness, crying and snotting a little bit, 
and then going right back to your sin again, you've not repented. You've mocked God. God will not be mocked. You haven't gotten away with anything. You haven't gotten away with anything. Okay? So I'm telling you this is your pastor so you can fix it. I'm telling this is your pastor so you can correct what you've been doing and on the road you're on. I'm asking you to get your child's heart back. Do you know how I know you're not you do you know how you know you don't have a child's heart anymore? When you're judging everybody else, when you're comparing everybody else. When you're psychoanalyzing everybody else. When you're personally analyzing and dissecting what everybody says and does. It means you have no faith and no trust. If that's the life you want to lead, you're going to live a lonely, lonely life. You're going to be miserable. It doesn't matter how much you pretend that you're okay. You're never going to be okay. Until you come to Christ, get rid of that cycle battle. All that other stuff. Psychologies and all these things have their place. That place is not in God's house. God, God's ways are not man's ways. So you can't compare man's psychology with God. And how God does things. Stop trying to mend the two. It doesn't work that way. It never has, it never will. The Bible itself says, God's way is not man's. Man's ways are not God's. Okay? Get your mind on the things of Christ. I don't know what you planned on getting when you came in this morning, but did you get it and was it worth it? Yes. And now where are you going to go with it now? This week, when you leave here, are you going to be the vessel of God? Are you going to be the child of God God calls you to be? Amen. Are you going to walk worthy of your vocation that God called you into? The ministry that God's called into you? Are you going to start reaching souls? Are you going to start doing the Bible studies? Are you going to start being responsible of the things you're supposed to be responsible of? Well, I want to. That tells me, no, you're not. I want to. I really do. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because if you really wanted to, you would. You would tell everybody you wanted to and never do it. It's better to have tried and failed than to have never tried at all. We've heard that over and over and over and over and over and over. But it's true. And the thing about the kingdom of God is God himself will help pick you up and dust you off and say, okay, go do it again. You've learned from this. No, 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 go and don't do this again. Yeah, but I don't understand because I need to be perfect. Yeah. We need to be perfect, which means better than who I was yesterday. Are you better than who you were yesterday? Are you better than who you were this morning? You can answer yes. Then you're starting. You're starting. Now go and be who God calls you to be, yes. who God chose you to be. Amen. 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 Let's 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 give the Lord hands up and give Him thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Sister uh, Savannah, close us in prayer, would you? that you would help us to get our mindsets on you and help us to focus on you and to be better than we were yesterday, Lord. Yes, Lord. And just to uh, try to reach lost souls and, and uh, just be better than we have been doing, Lord. And we just thank you and give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shake hands. Be friendly. Let them know you love them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.